The pilot shortage has been going on for a couple of years and is projected to go on for decades. We're trying to get more African-American kids right here in the state of Alabama who grew up in the shadows of Tuskegee, where those giants once stood in aviation. We're trying to take that legacy and continue to move it forward so that it doesn't become part of Alabama's past, but it actually remains a part of Alabama's future. Why, some say the moon. Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So uh, my name is Torres Moore, uh, I'm an undergraduate student at Tuskegee University. Um, I'm majoring in aerospace science, engineering, physics, and mathematics. I'm a, a small town kid hailing from Atala, Alabama. I've moved around a lot growing up because uh, my mom's a traveling nurse. I moved to like uh, D.C., Boston, Manhattan, Virginia, Maryland, and even California. Like I said, my mom's a traveling nurse, so we moved with her as well. So basically what inspired me to become a pilot was uh, my mom gave me a telescope when I was young, at uh, a young age. and that inspired me to become an astronaut. I was like, oh, outer space is pretty cool, you know? We made him our chief pilot, and partly so he can kind of run the program for all the rest of the uh, student pilots, and then it'll help him with his resume stuff. Oh, for it? Tori at CS. So when he, you know, puts an application to go to test pilot school and things like that, he can kind of sign his time as the chief pilot for the scholarship program and things like that. So hopefully, along with the flying, that'll kind of help I like general aviation. Um, what intrigues me the most about space, outer space, is the uncertainty. I want to be an explorer. I want to go in search of the unknown and do things that no one has ever done before, set foot on another planet before. Uh, eventually, we'll probably do interstellar travel. Dr. Guy Bluford has been one of my role models and idols uh, growing up. Uh, he was the first black astronaut. Uh, unfortunately, when he came down to Montgomery uh, for the Gathering Eagles, I wasn't able to make it. I'm really excited that the Red Tail Scholarship Foundation has granted me with the opportunity to fly up there to Cleveland, Ohio, to meet my role model, uh, Dr. Bluford, and the Cessna. I can gain experience, I travel across the United States, and also meet my role model. Yeah, man. Clouds look pretty cool. It's like Niagara Falls over there. Yeah, we're going to fly to him in a minute. When I was in sixth grade, uh, I got, in, got into a gambling rolling dice incident that led to uh, riding the back of a uh, police uh, car, uh, handcuffed on the way to the courthouse to meet the probation officer. And this has taught me that I need to stay on the straight path and I don't need to curve away outside any, otherwise people might view me as something more than what I really am. I was the only kid who ended up getting the punishment, but there was about 10 other white white boys who did the same thing as I did, but I'm the only one who actually received the punishment. And it makes me think that my margin of error, error is different than theirs. So on career day, a guidance counselor came into uh, my classroom uh, asking students what they want to do in their lives. And so it happened, I was the first and the only one that she asked, what do I want to do? And I told her that I wanted to be an astronaut. And it seemed as if she was shooting me down before I even got a chance to shoot my shot. And this, in turn, motivated me to do things that I couldn't even think that I could accomplish. I'm hoping that today is the beginning of the next black astronaut meeting the first black astronaut. Waving you right there. Who? The signature guy? Got yeah. you. Uh, is there Blueford right there? Where? We just landed in Cleveland, Ohio, man. Um, great experience. You can feel the bay, the beach. 
the Lake Erie, uh, but across from Canada. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, uh, Dr. Blueford was so nice and grateful that he met us at the plane. Um, humble, that's all I can say. And we're gonna go uh, meet him and uh, ask him some questions, uh, pick his brain, and hopefully I get more insight on my future career. Speak yourself. What up, what up? Alright, we're ready, Dr. Blue. Okay. Have you ever flown uh, 172? I was fortunate because I had a father who was a mechanical engineer. Uh, I also grew up at a time when blacks didn't fly airplanes. So I didn't see, I, I had no role models. So, Tuskegee Airmen, I heard about them, but I mean, I just never saw them. No interest. I went to Penn State. Penn State had mandatory ROTC. All male students had to take two years of ROTC. Wow. Uh, I still remember, I'm sitting in the audit auditorium with old bunch of second lieutenants, you know, and this fighter pilot comes in. And he was 6'2", um, football player size. He was a pro colonel. He was black. <laughs> His name was Chappie, Chappie James. James. Oh, good. <laughs> And he talked about flying the F-4, you know, and strapping that machine on, and you knew that's all you wanted to do. <clears throat> so, and that was the first time I had ever seen a black pilot. I'd never seen, you know, you don't need to fly the airport, you know, there is a black pilot. So, you, would you say Chappie James inspired you to do the... Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he inspired me to strap it on. You know, as I, as I tell people, when I graduated, I wanted to be a gunfighter, you know. But I thought that if I flew airplanes, I would be a better engineer, because I'm really an engineer. I'm really an engineer. So you can see when I, when you guys flew and I walked around, I wanted to take a look at your airplanes. Mm -hmm. you know, I looked at your airplane from an engineering point of view, yeah. You know, I was curious about that. I need to ask you some questions about that machine. I was, uh... TDY. I was in Washington, D.C. And uh, I came back to my hotel room. There was a little note on the door. Contact, contact at NASA. And I called NASA and they said, you've been selected as finals. I said, cool. This was like a Wednesday. I said, I'm on, I'm on travel. I won't be back till Friday. Let me get back with you. I got to talk to my boss, all that sort of stuff. So I called my boss and I said, hey, boss. I got this thing, this thing from NASA. They want me in Houston on Sunday. I won't be back home from this travel until Friday. And, you know, by the time I get tickets and no, 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 no. When you walk in on Friday, I'll hand you tickets and orders, which is what he did. Mm -hmm. So I got back on Friday, he handed tickets and orders, and I was gone. So I showed up in Houston. I showed up in Houston uh, with 19 other people for a week. Uh, during that week, they gave you a physical, and it's a physical that lasts a week. I, yeah, I was going to ask you, how, how is that physical? <laughs> they learn everything about you. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, and the physical today is much, much, much tougher. Yeah, oh, I yeah. It is, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah, it's, it's a killer. Um, was there ever a time that you felt like, uh, even before and after astronaut, well, I guess both, that you felt like the smartest guy in the room or that you needed to be the smartest guy in the room? No. Okay. I got selected with, among 35 people. They ask you to uh, write a letter as to why you want to be an astronaut. Uh, and then they put you, then they have you come in and make a presentation to a bunch of strangers about, you know, yourself and being an astronaut. So I still remember going in on that. Um, so I'm, I, I'm standing in front of this crowd, all these guys, I don't, and they're really members of the selection board. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy said, well, you know, tell us about yourself, and I'm talking about myself. And I'm not into the conversation too much, but the guy said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you went to Penn State? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you got a 2.44 out of a 4.0 average. What happened at Penn State? <laughs> Which is true. Uh, I said, uh, well, I got up on the campus, so it was all by myself. There were 12,500 women 
secretary at the time about one o'clock was starting to get strange telephone calls the news people wanted to get a hold of me everybody was starting to show interest in me she had no idea what was going on and at the end of that day it was a monday i got together with my supervisors and we had our month we had a weekly meeting and at the end of the meeting i said this is january that i'd been selected for the astronaut program and i'm leaving in june uh, I was still writing my dissertation. I had done the work, but I had given myself a year to write it, uh, and I had to do it in six months, and I barely, just barely got it done in six months. So that's what I did. And in um, uh, June, July of, of 78, um, I left Houston, I left uh, right back and went to Houston. And we stayed in Kentucky for a little bit, got some, got something to eat from a Cuban res uh, restaurant, uh, Zarin and CJ was flirting with the wait waitress, uh, believe it or not, but um, good Cuban food. That gave us some Cuban uh, coffee too. It was pretty nice. It's kind of like a shot, actually. Um, but after that, we waited the weather out a little bit and then we took back off. And then I was like, man, the weather's not getting any, any better. Had to do a lot of diversions and do a lot of transitions and dodging clouds. And I said, I can't go back to Montgomery like this. Like I need to land right now because the weather is pretty bad in Montgomery, up to about 60, 100 nautical miles uh, north of it. So we decided to land in the town that I was actually born in, uh, Fort Payne, Alabama. Uh, the weather wasn't so bad there, uh, but it was about to get bad there. So we landed. Uh, we actually ended up staying the night in Fort Payne because the weather was that bad in Montgomery and north of it. Um, and then we got in and we stayed the night. Um, maybe five hours, and we took back off from Montgomery. The weather was kind of bad then too, but it was manageable, and we managed it, and uh, we got home safely. That was pretty much the wrap. So the dream I want to accomplish is, like I say, I want to be a, a, a fighter pilot, I want to be a test pilot, and then I want to be an astronaut. And what Sheriff and Colonel Sparrow can do for me, and also the scholarship, they can help pave that way for me so I can you know, get the experience, like the UPT, undergraduate pilot training experience that I need, that they've been through. They can, they can guide me along a path how to successfully uh, pass, the, pass that, uh, that goal and get the UPT past that and you know, get to uh, the actual active duty route, get to flying and you know, see what I can do to get to test pilot school, which is only like 10% of the, the best fighter pilots can go to test pilot school. So it's just like they can help guide me along that path. When people say it's not a lot of African American pilots and it's only 2% of them, and it makes me feel kind of down, like, oh, how come we're so low? How come we're the minority? How come it's not a high percentage? You know, but it, what makes me motivated to change that is because we can. And, you know, we, we have the, we have the we, if we don't have the funds, then we have the scholarship for that. But we always have that drive, we have that motivation and determination to get to that point to make it where we're not a minority in the aviation field. And it's just, it just makes me, oh, like, we, we can do it. Even though if we fear heights, it's like, that's just a fear. Maybe we can, we can see if we actually do fear heights. Like in my case, I wasn't scared of heights. Maybe just stationary, but you know what I'm saying? We can always go past that. You know that I go to the same school as uh, the Tuskegee Airmen went to and they trained and they, they, they became the actual Tuskegee Airmen means a lot to me because that means I need, I need to uphold that tradition, that legacy. And you know, I'm, rock, I'm uh, walking in the same footsteps as they are. And it just means a lot. So I gotta you know, keep, the, keep the grind up, keep the hard work and stuff like that. So my whole life, uh, I've been looking up to Dr. Bluford. And after meeting him, I got the chance to actually look at him and he treated me as I, as I, as I was something or someone special. Uh, you don't normally expect that uh, from a celebrity or an entrepreneur or someone who's done great things uh, for this country as he has.